Today we have the Briggs & Stratton Q6500. This generator right here, you have 6,500 starting watts, but only 5,000 running. It is a 220 volt generator. With 220 volt, you can use it as a full backup generator to your home or RV. Okay guys, let me give you a closer look at this generator control panel. Right here, you have your 120 volt, 240 volt plug. It's a four pin twist lock that should give you 220 volt or two legs of 120. So you can use this to power like a 50 amp RV because you can use an adapter on this plug right here. You have one, two, and, an, and another two 120 volt 15 amp plugs and two USB right here. Guys, right here, this is your uh, reset breaker. On, off. Over here, you have your overload reset. And this generator does come with CO guard. So if you happen to run this somewhere, you should not run it. The generator will turn itself off. If it detects any carbon monoxide, it will shut itself off. This is your eco mode switch right here. That's your OK light and 50%, 75%, and 100%. There's no display on this generator, just lights to give you your power rating. Over here, you have an oil light. It will shut the generator off. Manual choke, and off and run positions. Guys, one thing I have to tell you about this generator, it is only pull start. There is no key switch, no battery, just engine and pull start, everything manual. So if you're looking for a generator, you, you just want an inverter generator, quiet, meaning that it's sealed, not a construction type generator, this right here will do it for you. Not too many bells and whistles on this bare bone generator, but it is inverter generator and it has a quiet. If you do want to get an inexpensive inverter generator, 240 volt, this one will do it for you. Let's look at some of the features on this generator. Okay, you can see this handle right here. It's a telescoping handle. A little red button in the middle. You press that. It goes all the way down. Okay. And you push it. It comes all the way up. Real nice. On this side of the generator is where you have your inrush of air. You can see the inverter right here. So it will suck air and cool. Keep the inverter cool. And on the other side, this is where your air will come out. And your exhaust is right here the side. I'm going to show you how to open this generator and get oil into it. Let's get it turned around. So it's really easy to move this generator. So this is your service side of your generator. Let's get this screws off. One, two, Three. Pull this back. Get your cover off. One thing I would have liked to see. I know it's an inexpensive generator, but a little padding, a little sound reduction would have been nice. Okay, once you get the generator open, you're going to see this yellow bag on the inside. Grab it. Pull it out. That's where they put your... Get this out. This is where you get your oil. It's a Briggs & Stratton 30 weight oil for this generator. There's your oil fill right here. Usually you get that open. And it has a very long dipstick. Okay. Generator did not come with a, a funnel. So this is one of the ones Guys, you need to pay attention to this. Most generators, most generators, you fill it up to the top right here. Make sure you don't do this with that one. You can see how long this dipstick is. Don't fill it up all the way to the top. That bottle was... 37 fluid ounces. Air filter, carburetor. You do have your drain screw. If in case you want to store this generator, just get you a small screwdriver, a flathead. 
turn this screw, get the gas to drain out of the carburetor, and it should drain your bulb. All right, your carburetor bulb. And you can store this generator with no problem. That will oil in the generator. This is a really tight, compact generator because this is the gas tank. It's a metal gas tank. It does have heat shielding all around it. And the engine is really pushed in there. You do have access to your spark plug. You can see it's uh, accessible right here. Just pull this out. And then you could access your spark plug right here. Let's get the top back on. There is no battery to connect. Remember I told you, this is only full start. We got the Briggs and Stratton 6500, the Q6500 all set up. I'm going to start it up. Let's see what we got. As usual, guys, I always have a surge protector ready. Let's start this thing up. So first thing you do is turn your fuel on. Eco mode off. And that's your breaker. I'll turn that off after I start it. I'll turn the breaker back on. Remember, no key start. Manual choke, manual pull. Choke half. Oh, I love this LED on the bottom. That must look real good at night. Let's go ahead and turn the power on. Mm. I don't like how the power steps up. Usually, most um, inverter generators, when you turn the power on, it will be right at its rated power, 120 volts. This one kind of steps up. Let's go ahead and kick it in eco mode. Oh no. Okay guys, you see how that power drops? That's absolutely danger zone. If you guys have a generator like this, using it on your RV, and your voltage drop is this bad, it's a good looking generator. But, Unfortunately, if it's putting power out in the 104, let's turn that eco mode back on. That's, that's not eco mode. I think this is quiet control. So it just lowers the RPM. So if I'm going to do this test, it's going to have to be in eco mode off. One twenty. Okay, and like this, the surge protector won't even allow that power to go to the RV. That is the exact same reason I tell you guys, always attach a surge protector. If I did not have this monitor, I would never know this thing was putting out 104 volts. Hook it up to my RV, I could fry every piece of electronics inside. That would have been really bad. Um, I'm really hesitating hooking this thing up to my RV. Um, I'm not going to do it. Seeing this, I can run it in eco mode off just to test it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to call this video. Um, I don't recommend this if it's running. And I know it's there's nothing wrong with this. It's brand new. So, yeah. This one's going back, unfortunately. So that's it for this test, guys. I'm, I'm not even going to go further. I can do a sound test for those of you guys who want this generator. But, yeah, right about 23 feet. Fifty-eight point six. Wow. 
wide open. 67.2. That's now it's gonna get louder once you put a load on it. But guys, maybe if I leave it right here, we can test it. But I do not like how it lowered that power. And I'm not gonna check it on my RV. Okay guys, that's the first. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be testing this generator due to the fact that when it lowers its voltage, it goes too low. See right here, 105, 104 on both legs. I know once I put a load on it, it might just kick all the way up, but I'm not taking that chance on my RV. It's not gonna happen. Okay guys, sorry for this quick test. Um, that's that's a fail guys if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up I'm just being open and 100% with you guys I'm not gonna uh, uh, give this a good rating if it does this okay guys give me a thumbs up leave a comment tell me what you think have a great day bye